you're following along and you've noticed that I've not yet saved my file, please click thumbs down on this video because uh, that is really embarrassing. Save your files, then you get autosave. Now we've got to remove the side material right here, and this is, I think, one area where the cam really shines. This is so easy to get good tool paths to. 2D Adaptive Clearing picks up the same tool we just had under Geometry. I'm just going to click this, and then under Stock Contours, it's going to go ahead and pick the right half of that part, and all we've got to do under Heights is change it from the model bottom to Selection, and we'll pick this face right here. And I know this defaults to a higher optimal load than we want. Again, we're going to be real fragile with this tool, uh, our part when we're holding it. So we'll reduce the load, and I'll leave a few thou here, just so we can come back and clean it up later. Amazing, amazing. Look, I mean, look at this. We'll have already cleared some of the material in the middle, so um, this is not a perfectly accurate uh, render. Actually, I'll show you the better way to do this would be to simulate it from the, from the setup, from the whole part, and just jump forward here. Look at that. Just like so. Similar thing, we need to clear out this area here, this little shelf, 2D, adaptive clearing, same tool. Pocket, or the geometry is going to follow this line, and then for stock contours, let's just choose this face here. Same thing to pick the, bo pick the right bottom um, geometry, which will be that face. Let's just see what we get. <laughs> so easy. It's recognized that we already have uh, cleared some of that interior. Oh, actually, it's probably not that. It's probably because we chose the stock of this, but still, awesome. Uh, let's go leave a few thou for cleanup, and we're good. Awesome. So let's really quick add some 2D contour cleanups. For me, that's going to be tool 32. Where are we? There we go. So it has a slight radius on the end. And we'll just we'll do this one. Okay, and then do another one, 2D Contour. We will clean up the outside edges here. Okay, so this is a great example where it looks like it's hard to, to select certain edges. Just hold down the Alt key in Fusion. That lets you select specific edges and not have it propagate all the way around. And it should pick up the selected contours as the bottom level, so we should be okay there. And finally, 2D Contour, we will do this one a little differently. We'll pick that edge, and then we'll go into Heights and do selection of this as the bottom contour. Let's model up our Woodruff Cutter. So we'll do, uh, we're in a new 2D Contour tool, Select Tool, and we'll click New Tool down here. And we'll start with the cutter, and we'll just, I like to just page down, or arrow down, sorry, to find the right one. Slot mill looks right, although that looks horrendous. So the diameter is 0.511. For me, it is zero corner radius. Shaft is point like 0.2. There we go, starting to look right. And the flutes are 0.125. Oops. Like so. And just so you're clear, we get 511 as I rotate the tool through here. It's supposed to be half inch, but I'm getting 511 and it's 0 0.18, uh, an eighth of an inch thick, th that away. Fees and speeds, we're going to run this at 1,800 and 15 inches a minute. Uh, if we take a look, I think it's, it's got eight flutes, so that is telling us it's about a thou per chip. I'm comfortable with that. Click OK, click OK, and we'll pick our toolpath. Bottom heights from the contour, all I want to do is, is multiple roughing passes to ease in. We'll make 0.025 and we'll do three of them. Perfect. You can see it's coming in. First and second passes are taking progressively deeper cuts. And the third pass here, full depth of cut. Awesome. 
Uh, let's go make some chips. Tormach, Path Pilot, Conversational. We're going to face it off first. Tool 7. These settings are actually all fine. Post a file. PVS. Save. Overwrite. Great. Now what we're going to do, we've got a little drawing here, is we're going to turn it down to the 1.18 back 0.19 inches. So conversational. OD turn. It's probably already in here because I've been playing around. Yep. Negative 0.19 down to 1.18 from 1.5. Append to file. Append. We'll cut our thread relief which is the, with the grooving tool. Conversational groove part and see here, that is 0 0.107. Yeah, again, I've been playing around. 0 0.107 looks good. Append to file. And last but certainly not least, the threading. So, tool four, we are going to go 34 threads per inch. And we're going to start at the 1.18, and we're going to go down, like we said in the Excel, to about 1.162. And what we can do is we can leave it in there and probably try to thread it on to see if we can go deeper and tweak it. If we're at the wrong TPI, you may just have to scrap it and start over. Let's, uh, let's see what we get, though. No coolant because uh, I want to improve the, it's much better for the video. There's actually one reason again why I keep using the Trico on the mill. This three jaw does have some run out. Uh, Adam Booth would not approve. We'll see, uh, we'll see if it causes any problems for us. God, that's beautiful. Finish pass. It's going to clean up the shoulder. Should now, I think, do a tool change to the groove tool. <laughs> now the moment of, uh, oh, well, clean up on the groove tool. Now the moment. <laughs> oh, I could watch this all day long. Look at that, folks. Isn't it beautiful? All right, camera's running. Let's see if we, if we got to start over. Let's also not damage this PVS-14. Uh, okay, I didn't actually put a deeper. That may be a necessary. Oh, my God, folks. I'm not going to throw any further because of the burr. Look at that. And there's a tiny bit of play, but oh, oh, awesome. That is a win. That's really exciting. You may notice there's already a hole there. Stay tuned for our blooper reel footage. Uh, okay, so here we go. Drill, drill number nine. This is not the one I'm concerned about. The one I'm concerned about is the next tool, tool 11, because that's what's going to put a little bit more vibration in this part, which, as you can see, is being held in by these actually a reused set of soft jaws from another customer job that it's a slightly wider diameter so it's not perfect by any means but um, we'll see if it works we've got a real thin you know with the cut here we're helixing in basically in the existing drilled hole so I think it's gonna work we'll see It's actually really cool to see the Tormach move like this. It's not a fast machine compared to a you know two hundred thousand dollar vertical machine center, but you can make these fast little movements pretty quick. Cool, right? That, that sounds great. Sweet. I like that. If if anything, I'm spending too much time, you know, with a conservative helix in cutting a little bit too much air but uh, it's not what I'm worried about on this particular part. All right, this should be the last pass uh, interpolating out the center rough pocket. It'll come out, I hope, here and cut the right side off. Yep. 
if you see a whole bunch of black chips in the Tormach enclosure, that's because we just finished running a Delrin job for customer. You know, it's funny, I started with Delrin back in the New York City first apartment with the tag, and Delrin is fun to cut. Um, we don't cut a ton of plastics in, in general, but it seems to be certainly one of the easier ones or easier ones to come out with a great surface finish. Okay, I think now we just gotta clean up some of the material inside on the left side where we're gonna cut the woodruff groove. Ooh, a little heavier than I wanted actually, but no problem at all. Uh, it is being held in with the soft jaws here. Sweet. We have a little bit of extra material on the outside here, which um, I guess maybe I didn't have enough cut off on the lathe, or maybe we were a little bit high somehow. We'll see if it just peels off or whether I really goofed somehow. I, mean, I don't think it's going to affect the part in the end, but I am a little surprised. Last but not least, the wood roof. There's just always something nerve-wracking about undercutting. No matter how much you, you do your homework and test it and prep and do gentle lead-ins and, and what's of cut, undercutting is just nerve-wracking. And I used to do a lot of it on another job. And we would try to buy staggered tooth uh, to help clear your chips because that's the real enemy. This looks uh, looks good. It sounds good. You can see the chips are evacuating, which is which is great. So, boy, that it? I think that's it. Come on, take a look at that. Isn't that a pretty cool looking part? And it's a part I think that's cool because it's kind of hard to envision or visualize when you first get started. It took me, honestly, a little bit before we filmed to think about how I wanted to do this. So, all right, let's see if the threads fit. Unless we screw them up in the soft jaws, they should be okay. Oh, folks, look at that. I mean, it's like smooth silk, but no play. Oh, that is awesome. Awesome, awesome. This is freaking cool, right? Uh, this is cool. Okay, so then here is our spotting scope. And if you see, let's see if it clips on. Uh-oh. Oh, nope. Oh, there we go. Folks, this is why I love what I get to do. I talked about it in the last video we just did on the Tom Lipton manual layout where it's good to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. I know it sounds crazy. I didn't think I could do this, or I thought I could, but I thought I would struggle more. I actually legitimately thought this part might not work today. And that's kind of, I think, I appreciate that you guys appreciate that when we do things on the show or on the channel, we're honest, and if we make mistakes, we make mistakes. Okay, in this video, you saw we had a wrong Z-plane on the drill, which we'll come back to later. And, uh, you know, we had to go tweak the wood roofs for the, a, a more proper lead-in. but. Folks, look at this. How amazing is this? I, I mean, it kind of looks badass, but I mean, that adapter is awesome. And it's cool because, again, we're using Fusion 360 to create this part and create, I think, great G-code uh, or tool pass in not a lot of operations. If you think about it, drilling was a clearance op, the two roughing ops, and then we just duplicated those basically as 2D contours to clean them up, which you probably you could, could have just done the whole thing with a finish end mill. And then a woodruff. How easy is that? And then we use the Tormach lathe and then move that part over to the mill. I think it's fun. I think it's really cool. So uh, before we wrap, let's go take a look at this thing at night tonight uh, outside and see how she looks. Uh, otherwise, folks, take care. I appreciate the thumbs up, comments, likes, share. See you soon. All right. It's not quite pitch black out. The camera looks dark, but you can see we've actually got quite a bit. Well, you can't really see, but we've got quite a bit of moonlight. But here's the cool thing. Got this on the spotting scope, folks. This is freaking awesome. Mounted, uh, pointed about 300 yards away at a fence um, on a neighboring property. And look at that. Look at that detail. And if we zoom in, we lose some light because you zoom in, but we can focus it in a little still. How freaking cool is that? Oh my gosh. How cool is this? Sorry, the 
camera mount is obviously a little sketchy as we're looking through the eyepiece. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Look at that, folks.